Hello and welcome to the second video of our mini prep buffer mixing series, where you learn to save money for your lab by mixing your own reagents. As a quick reminder, all protocols have been learned from Senpai Nicholas Coleman of the University of Sydney, who discovered them at the Fountain of Knowledge, openwetware.org. The second buffer used in the mini prep process is buffer P2, also known as buffer B or lysis buffer. The role of this buffer is to use sodium hydroxide to lyse the cell, while a powerful detergent named SDS solubilizes protein, lipids, and chromosomal DNA. When we use this buffer to lyse ourselves, we are going to walk a delicate line. We must give sufficient time for the RNAs in buffer P1 to do its dirty work, cutting up all the RNA released by our cells. However, leave the reaction too long, and the mixture of intact proteases, detergent, and sodium hydroxide will start to damage our plasma DNA. Even shaking too vigorously while using this buffer can result in the shearing of plasma DNA. The next buffer in the series is aptly named the neutralization buffer, as it will precipitate out denatured proteins, chromosomal DNA, cellular debris, and SDS, leaving our much smaller plasma DNA within the solution. This combination of buffers will allow us to use a centrifugation step to quickly separate our plasma DNA from the majority of the cellular mass. The components of this buffer are difficult to order based on relative deadliness. They're both really awful if they land on your skin or get in your eyes. If you're diluting from a solution, remember that concentrated sodium hydroxide is very corrosive and releases some hefty fumes. Gloves, lab curtain goggles are a must, and ensure you move to a well-ventilated area such as a chemical hood to carry out the dilution. As with powerful acids, you must add this extremely basic solution to water and not the other way around. In the demonstration, we'll be using pellets of NaOH, which is a far safer form and will prevent us from being exposed to any concentrated solution. At our desired concentration of 200 millimolar, sodium hydroxide will only be mildly irritive. Still, avoid skin and eye contact. SDS is a similar story. Powerful detergents can be as effective as strong acid when they get on your skin or in your eyes. As an added twist, SDS will often come as a very fine powder that will be flammable if a bunch is knocked up into the air. Avoid using a Bunsen while dissolving SDS. You really won't need a sterile environment, except when obtaining water from your sterile bottle. If you've long monkey arms like our demonstrator here, try to get a bigger lab coat than the one he is wearing. Those exposed wrists are making me nervous just looking at him. Time for the main act. As before, the amount of stock solution your lab needs is going to depend upon your volume of work. So we'll show you the quantities for a 1 litre solution on the screen, with a conversion calculation to get to the 100 ml quantities I will now describe for the visual demonstration. We will start with about 25 ml of sterile, purified water in a clean beaker, to which we will add 0.8 grams of sodium hydroxide pellets, mixing slowly to allow them to dissolve. This will take a bit of time. Up next comes one gram of SDS powder. Be careful not to inhale or ignite the particulate matter as you add it to the beaker. Vigorous mixing here will result in a lot of bubbles thanks to the detergent properties of this buffer. Slowly make up your solution to its final volume using the graduation on the beaker as a guide. Let the bubbles subside, then gently pour your fresh solution into a sterile bottle, not forgetting to add 15 ml to a labeled falcon tube for immediate use. The falcon can remain at room temp but keep your stock solution bottle in the fridge. Only the first and the last of mini prep buffers needs to be sterilized, so don't worry about struggling with filters or the autoclave. Ain't no way something is going to start living in this hellscape of basic detergents. This buffer can be one of the first to fail, often developing a precipitate after about a month that will warn you that it's balked. Minimizing the amount of headspace in the stock solution bottle should slow down this process. Fortunately, lysis buffer is also the easiest to remake, so we'll see you next time when you need to make some more stock. That's about it for Buffer P2. The protocols in this video series were written by Dr. Nicholas Coleman from the University of Sydney, who himself learned them from openwetware.org. Openwetware likely reverse engineered the recipes from Queergen's commercial buffer kit, who once held the IP, which is now expired, and probably still hold it as a trade secret. Use these skills and the knowledge that you stand on the shoulders of giants, and live in a time of unprecedented sharing of knowledge. Subscribe to the channel, find us on Twitch, or head to foundry.bio to join our community of DIY biologists.